Senator from New Hampshire. Mr. President, I'm here to join so many of my colleagues to oppose the efforts to repeal the Affordable Care Act. Outright repeal without a replacement plan will hurt hundreds of thousands of people in New Hampshire, as well as millions across this country. The estimate is anywhere from 20 to 30 million people who will lose their health insurance coverage. And there are all kinds of reasons why this is a bad idea. Uh, many of those have been addressed by my colleagues very eloquently. I, I want to just talk about a couple of those reasons. Um, the first is one that Senator Durbin alluded to earlier, and that is what repeal of this law will mean for the heroin and opioid epidemic um, that is facing New Hampshire and so many states across this country. Repeal will dramatically worsen that epidemic because it will deny treatment for people who are abusing substances, and it will also deny them access to mental health services. That will mean a surge in overdose deaths, and it will reverse so much of the progress that we're beginning to make. Now, I understand that sweeping health care reform is not easy. We all know that the Affordable Care Act is not perfect. It needs work. But the way to address it is not to repeal it. It's to work together to make it better. Rather than the rush to destroy the Affordable Care Act with no replacement in sight, we should be working together on a bipartisan basis to make common sense improvements to the law. It can be done, I know, because Tim Scott and I worked together to pass the PACE Act last year to make it easier for us to control um, health care insurance increases and to allow states to make a determination about group size for health insurance plans. Now, one of the things that I am hopeful about is that President-elect Trump, in the course of many visits to New Hampshire over the last year, again and again pledged to take robust action to combat the opioid epidemic in New Hampshire and across America. And yet, by repealing the Affordable Care Act, President-elect Trump and Republican leadership in Congress would make the op opioid crisis so much worse. This would be a broken promise to communities all across this country who are struggling with addiction. The Affordable Care Act has given millions of Americans access to treatment and recovery. It's saved countless lives. And Repealing it would deny treatment to people suffering from substance use disorders. It will cost lives. It will take a terrible toll on communities across America. In New Hampshire alone, health care reform has helped over 100,000 people gain access to health care coverage. People like Keith from Ringe, New Hampshire. Keith was one of the thousands of Granite Staters able to access quality, affordable health insurance through our state's Medicaid expansion program. Keith told my office that the Medicaid expansion literally saved his life. Keith was suffering from several health issues when he went to see his doctor after he signed up for the New Hampshire, New Hampshire Health Protection Plan, which is what we call our expansion of Medicaid. He told us that had he not had insurance, doctors likely would not have caught his kidney cancer early like they did. But because he had that health insurance, Keith was able to afford and access treatment for his cancer. He is thankfully now cancer free, and he credits having insurance through Medicaid expansion with saving his life. Now, as I said, New Hampshire's in the midst of a heroin and opioid epidemic. We've talked about the grim statistics frequently in the last year as we've come to the floor. In 2014, we lost 47,000 Americans due to heroin and opioid overdoses. And in New Hampshire, when all of the analysis is in from 2016, we're expecting to lose almost 500 people due to overdose deaths. As Senator Durbin pointed out, we have one of the highest percentage of overdose deaths in the country. But it doesn't have to be that way, because addiction is an illness. 
It's an illness that doesn't have a cure, but we made progress in treating it. The Affordable Care Act ensures that substance misuse services are covered by insurance. And as a direct result of the Affordable Care Act, many of those suffering finally have access to counseling and therapy like medication-assisted treatments. And in addition to covering substance misuse counseling, the Affordable Care Act is also built on mental health parity provisions that require group health plans and insurers offering coverage of mental health services to provide comparable coverage to what they provide for other medical care when it comes to substance misuse. The Affordable Care Act extended these parity goals by requiring mental health services to be covered as essential health benefits. And it also helped expand access to these services by ensuring more patients. Now, we worked very hard in a bipartisan way over the last year in this chamber to pass the Comprehensive Addiction and Recovery Act, to pass the 21st Century Cures Act that provided a billion dollars to address heroin and opioid um, problems in this country. Both of those provide significant benefits to people who are suffering from substance misuse. But if we repeal the Affordable Care Act, we are going to undo all of the progress that we've made through these supplemental pieces of law, because it would reverse the treatment access that so many people in New Hampshire and across this country have. Why would we deliberately take away access to this life-saving treatment from so many people who are struggling to overcome addiction? Repealing the Affordable Care Act will affect people like Ashley Herto of Dover, who said that her access to health care as a new Medicaid enrollee was critical to her addiction recovery. As she told our newspaper, The Union Leader, I am living proof that by giving individuals suffering with substance use disorders access to health insurance, we as a society are giving people like me the chance to be who we really are again. I had the opportunity last Friday to visit a program called Hope on Haven Hill in Rochester, New Hampshire. It provides help for women with substance misuse issues who are pregnant who, or who have just delivered babies. It works because these young women are enrolled in our Medicaid expansion program. Without that, they would lose any opportunity for treatment for their substance misuse. And when I visited them, they talked about what it was like to be in a place where it was like a home, where people wanted to help them so that they could provide a better life for themselves and their children. Without access to life-saving addiction treatment, many people like Ashley, like those young women at Hope on Haven Hill, would succumb to their addiction. And what is so frustrating, again, about this situation is that it's completely preventable. It's not only the right thing to do, it is the economic thing to do, because the costs of failing to provide treatment for people who have substance misuse disorders is to make sure that they cannot become profitable, tax-paying members of our society. Now I want to address one other benefit of the Affordable Care Act, um, because, as Senator Murray said, it is so critical to 50 percent of our population, and that is access to health care for women. Before the Affordable Care Act, women paid more for our health insurance, and contraceptives was something that made insurance cost more, and particularly for women who don't have the economic means, the Affordable Care Act has, for the first time, made contraceptives available to women without cost-sharing requirements like co-pays and deductibles and co-insurance. And a study after study has shown access to contra contraceptives is one of the greatest indicators of success for women. 
When women are able to plan their pregnancies, they're more likely to be able to graduate from high school, to enroll in college, to have stable and higher paying jobs, to make sure that their health outcomes are better for themselves and their children and their families. And it's especially frustrating that last week, our Republican colleagues in the House leadership announced that they're going to use the budget process not only to repeal the Affordable Care Act and the help that that provides to women for contraceptive coverage, but they're also going to use this vehicle to defund Planned Parenthood. This is not only irresponsible, but it's dangerous. Just this morning, Senator Hassan and I visited a Planned Parenthood clinic in Exeter, New Hampshire. We talked with women who have benefited from the vital services that this center provides to thousands of Granite Staters. They talked about how 94% of the services that are provided in New Hampshire Planned Parenthood clinics are related to prevention. Um, but they also talked about, and this is the word that one of the volunteers used in talking about the women that she had met with who had come to Planned Parenthood clinics. She said, what they tell me is that Planned Parenthood saved me. For so many women who have economic challenges, for those low-income women who need access to services in New Hampshire and across the country, they don't have any other place where they can get services if we close down Planned Parenthood clinics. We have two counties in New Hampshire that doesn't have community health centers that doesn't have a place where women can readily go. So defunding Planned Parenthood, closing the doors to Planned Parenthood health centers in New Hampshire and across this country would put millions of women in a situation where they have nowhere to go to access basic health care services. That will cost women. It will cost women and their families access to preventative care. And ultimately, it's going to cost the lives of women. So repealing the Affordable Care Act is going to actively worsen health outcomes. It will provide less access to care for our most vulnerable populations. It will increase unplanned parent pregnancies. It will mean that people who have pre-existing conditions will not be able to access health insurance in the future. The list goes on and on. The repeal of the Affordable Care Act will not only throw millions of people off their health care, but it will also impact the coverage of millions of others. Because millions of Americans will see their premiums rise, they'll see reinstatement of lifetime limits, they'll see reinstatement of expensive cost-sharing requirements, higher deductibles, We'll see a reinstatement by health insurance co companies of coverage denials or sky-high premiums because of pre-existing conditions. Why would we go back to those exclusionary and detrimental practices? Why would we go back to a time when we had 20, over 20, 20 million fewer people in this country who had access to health insurance? Now is the time for us to come together. Instead of scrapping this law, we should be working together to improve it, to make it work for all Americans. Because make no mistake, repealing the Affordable Care Act without a replacement plan, stripping away health insurance for tens of thousands of Granite Staters, for over 20 million Americans, it is not only counterintuitive, but it is dangerous. We can do better in America. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor.